Calvin, our next dish? It's spaghetti on a stick. Well, how would you put spaghetti on a stick? You have a bunch of loose ingredients. You have noodles, meat, yeah. but they've done it. Do you know how? So far at the Minnesota State Fair, we've experienced cooking on a massive scale. It's going to be rated C because it's about to get pornographic. Then, Calvin and I took on the fair's most bizarre food combinations. As a chef for 20 years, this shouldn't work in my mind. But it works at the State Fair. Today, it's all about crazy food creations on the stick. The Minnesota State Fair is famous for putting food on a stick. I don't know when this became a trend, but it did. This year, vendors proudly boast over 80 different foods on a stick. They've gone crazy with the stick theme. Here, you can even find a pork chop on a stick, cheese on a stick, spaghetti on a stick. How do you put spaghetti on a stick? We will find out soon enough, Sonny. Now, it's time for Calvin and I to hit the streets. You ready? What does that do? Expands your large intestines and small intestines. Should we go? Yeah. Okay. Calvin, this is our first location of the day, and this is a perfect breakfast because it's bacon. The love Big Fat Bacon has built over the last 15 years can all be attributed to one product, a big fat quarter pound piece of bacon on a stick. During 12 glorious days each year, Big Fat Bacon treats its patrons with these specially baked on a stick thick cuts. 25 minutes in the oven, followed by two minutes on the flat top, turns the crispiness to 11.5. Finally, a shiny glaze of maple syrup and a sprinkle of peppercorn and sea salt. This thing is gigantic. Yeah, I think two people usually split it in half and they eat their way to the center at the same time and it usually ends with a romantic kiss. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That we both eat our own? Exactly. Aha. Uh -huh. oh. That's so bad, boy. That is a thick cut bacon, but you still got some crispy bits in there. So it has a nice outer rind of fat, but it's not overpowering. It has a nice fat to meat ratio. Hey, you have a nice fat to meat ratio too. I do, don't I? Maple flavor goes perfect for breakfast. It's oily, it's greasy, it's sticky. There's one thing we're missing. Reaching off screen. <laughs> it's chocolate. Boop. Are you? Is this the day to be cautious? What's happening? Let's bring it, right? Bring it. Bring the 11. <laughs> Yeah, good. Calvin does not have confidence in this concept, but I do. Let's go for it. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. A more? It's a great contrast between the savoriness and the oiliness of the bacon. And now this sweet, rich chocolate sauce. Bacon, pork, go so well with sugar. Oh, please, I don't want to be. Oh, because I'm a pig? The corn dog is inarguably the most iconic food on a stick in the USA. And in 1947, it became the first food on a stick introduced to this state fair. 365,000. That is the average number of corn dogs consumed here each year. But why go for an old school dog when you could have a mega dog? When I first saw this, I was wondering where the heck do you get an 18-inch sausage? What they actually do, multiple dogs, oh, one, two, and three, God. on top of each other. The dogs are concealed with a thick layer of cornmeal batter, then immersed in bubbling oil. Fry until it's golden. Oh, oh, that's so hot. But it's so delicious. A nice plump wiener inside. Beautiful, bready, crispy, crunchy corn dog shell on the outside. Yes, the cornmeal is sweet. has a nice exterior where it's crunchy. And the color on it, that is really good golden fry. The shop behind us has been serving these since 1954. Corn dogs, yummy, yummy. This one is their longest variation. But there's a dilemma coming up. The stick, what do you keep doing? At some point, it's going to go through me, Calvin. I'll be a new co-host. <laughs> I know your plan now. That I die and you take over the show. I'm the taking you out of my will immediately. <laughs> Why did I just say, in the event that I die, Calvin takes over the best ever food review show. I'm taking that clause out. You get my shoe collection instead. The State Fair is packed with edible nostalgia, but it's also a field for creativity and innovation. The Blue Barn is a sturdy player on that field. For eight years, this building has been a reliable destination for good old comfort food. And their best seller happens to be on a stick. Here we have Nashville chicken on a stick. 
Have you ever had a Nashville hot chicken before? It's all the craze right now. Really? Yes. Tell me about it. I don't know anything about it. Okay, voiceover. Nashville hot chicken is fried chicken with a major kick from their cayenne pepper hot sauce. At Blue Barn, they start with chicken breast, marinated in buttermilk, egg, hot sauce, and some secret spices. Once the breasts soak up all those zesty flavors, they're coated with crushed cornflakes. Then on the skewer and in the frying pan. Then it's out for a slather of their signature cayenne blend. This chicken on a stick was first introduced in 2019, and they sold 37,000 portions at the state fair. This year, it might be 37,000 and two. two. Ooh. The cornflakes really give a great texture and crunch. Cornflakes and not just a fine kind of powder on the outside. It creates more surface area. There's more crisp to crunch on. I admire people who choose to work with chicken breast. Out of all the animal parts, it'd be easier to make something delicious and juicy out of pig brain than chicken breast. Chicken breast can be so dry if you treat it wrong. Yeah, but it's been treated really well. Really well. Oh, I bit my mouth. The chicken and a little bit of my mouth in one meal coagulate together becomes this new dish, the sunny Nashville hot chicken. Not bad. We got that recipe. Woo. The Midwest's anything on a stick obsession can be traced back to this guy and his invention from 1927. This machine made frying smooth as grease. Soon, vendors were free to shove sticks in and fry up all manner of foods, including our next Minnesota sweetheart, Hot Dish. Hot Dish is a famous Minnesota recipe. Basically, green beans in a can, corn in a can, some ground beef, cream of mushroom soup, also from a can, mix it all up, top that with tater tots, that's tater tot hot dish here. Hot Dish on a Stick. Invented in 2002, Hot Dish on a Stick is a fascinating deconstruction of a hot dish. A skewer loaded with a meatball, a tater tot, a meatball, and a tater tot. And finally, another meatball. Dip that in cornmeal batter. When it's ready, you can give it a little bit of a dip in this. This is cream of mushroom soup. Oh, that looks nice. It does smell like a traditional corn dog, but this has a completely different filling. I can't wait. Let's try it out. Your childhood right here on a stick. Cream of mushroom soup as a dipping sauce is pretty hilarious. Usually it's ranch, something cool, but this is a war. The next layer is a tater tot. I think I enjoy the tater tot with the cream of mushroom soup. More, more. The tater tot with the corn dog coating. It's a lot of carb on carb action, but it's sweet and delicious. I don't mind it. No. This is food number four on a stick. We're halfway there. Let's keep moving. You keep doing that. I'm gonna pick up our trash and then I'm gonna grab my other trash. Let's go. Picture this, spaghetti, but now it's on a stick. Ten years ago, oodles and noodles made up their minds to defy gravity with this fun fair food. Angel hair pasta and ground beef tie the knot in a ball and settle down on a stick. These meat lollipops are coated in breadcrumb batter. Then they get the sizzling treatment. I'm starting to see a trend today. Everything is dipped, fried, and stuck, and sticked, penetrated. Like true spaghetti, it gets a slather of marinara sauce and a sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. Sunny, what do you call a fake pasta? Uh, I don't know. An impasta. Oh. It smells tomatoey, fresh. We're looking at a tomato layer, a bread layer, and then the meatball layer, which has some noodles inside of it. It's like Inception, the movie. It's like Inception, the meatball. Oh man, that was really good. Everything we've had so far has been that kind of core meal, core meal batter. I like it, but you don't want it 42 times in one day. This is a really different type of breading, and it's almost like you're eating some kind of crust that you would find on a mozzarella stick with like oregano in there, Italian seasoning. So I like the bread. All the flavors here scream Italian. Basil, oregano, garlic, tomato. You know, for all the dishes we've eaten today, this is the most freshest one because they use tomato. This is $5, and you get a real authentic taste of Italy. Maybe not authentic, but authentic for the North. You can't really tell that it has noodles in there, but the texture is nice. Not overly meaty. It's kind of a unique filler. The noodles create a very airy texture to the meatball. Instead of having a dense meatball, this is quite light. It is really good. Boom! Italy on a stick, an entire spaghetti meal. This could feed an entire person for half uh, an hour. <laughs> Next, there's an animal in this sausage you'd never find on Old McDonald's farm. Bayou Bob's joined the fair in 1997, offering a taste of the bayou. That's America's Deep South. The guy who served this to us, his name is Dallas. This is Bob. Here, their menu is simple. Alligator. 
Every year, 20,000 pounds of alligator meat go through this kitchen to get deep fried, sauteed, or wrapped up in a sausage. Unlike chicken or beef, most of the meat that comes off a gator comes from its tail. That tail meat gets ground up and mixed with Cajun seasonings, then stuffed in a sausage. Like a Jimmy Dean's breakfast sausage. Beautifully spiced. I love the flavor. Tons and tons of bayou seasoning here. It doesn't go down like a greasy pork or beef dog. It does have more of like a slightly drier chicken feeling. It is a very flavorful meat. It has more protein, but less fat or sodium than chicken. Here's the thing with alligators. It looked terrifying. It had a big mouth, big tail. You could totally eat your head in one bite. But when you see them like this, it's like, oh, it's not so scary. It's smiling, look. <laughs> This next stick food violates the foundational tenets of four religions and seven cults. Oh my god, that's so heavy. Hold on, I need a freaking crane to prop it up. Ugh. So this looks like a corn dog on steroids. Or Illinois. This is a dilly dog, like a mutated corn dog that's had some surgical enhancements, including pickle implants. Kill the roast of my beef, the mash to my potato. It all starts with a brat in the center. Now it's time for the pickle. Already that is enough. I would have been like, this is extreme, but let's try it. And then they fried it after that. To make it not keto friendly. But in order for this usually wet dill rod to hold the forthcoming batter, it must be dried a bit by sweating it out in a pickle warmer. Now it's time to fry. This oblong oddity is one of the state fair's top 10 foods. In a good year, they sell over 2,000 per day. That is a lot of dilly dally. Do you want to cross your arms? Oh, no, I don't. Let's, okay. let's yeah, sorry. Oh. I like it. Uh oh. Please. Gravity is not helping me right now. It's like this pickle lost too much weight and its clothes don't fit anymore. Take off the stick? Then how is that a stick themed episode? Back on the stick. The brat has a nice porky flavor. The pickle has a nice briny acidic flavor. And then that cornmeal batter is sweet. This is the perfect Minnesota State Fair food. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> It's fun, dude. You got like a pickle here and it's like, oh, is that just a pickle? It's like, no, don't forget about me. I'm here too. I live inside the pickle. Hey, guys. What happens if he gets shy? Oh, hey, guys. I gotta get going. I'll talk to you later. This one is fun. Fun with the capital F. <laughs> Finally, after seven foods, it's time for dessert. This is the most decadent, over-the-top, unhealthy food you'll find here or anywhere else. What we're looking at right here is a pinnacle of sweet fried foods on a stick. I've heard about them my whole life, but I was too poor to drive all the way here and pay for admission, even though I grew up an hour away. Very sad story. This here is a Snickers bar. Wrap it in a pancake batter blanket and deep fry. If that's not enough to make you reach for your insulin, they also douse it with powdered sugar. This is the ultimate guilty pleasure. Oh my god, that is so good! So sweet! So good! I'm going to be a gun. How can you not eat this growing up? Yeah, what was I thinking? The chocolate, the nougat, the peanut, peanuts. And caramel. And caramel. Together, encased in a pancake batter. This, Sunny, this is true gluttony. When you look inside, you can see the sticker has just completely melted down. All the ingredients are mixing and mingling together. And then there's just a little bit of texture, too. You got the crunch when you bite it. Oh, it's about to poop. About to poop? It was coming out the bottom. There's some stuff you see as you walk around the fair where you're like, there's no way that's going to be good. It's just a gimmick. This seems like a gimmick, but when you eat it, it is delicious. This has withstood the test of time. I may never eat another stickers the same way again. Calvin, today we ate eight different foods on a stick. Tell me which one was your favorite. My favorite today has to be chocolate bacon on a stick. Oh. oh the saltiness, the cure, the chocolate really threw me off. But man, the best surprise of the day. My runner up is the Italy meatball spaghetti on a stick. Very creative, very light, and very surprising. But the one that blew me away, the one I've heard about for over a decade, the Snickers that has been fried. It took my heart away, it took my breath away, and actually my heart rate's going up because of probably the insulin dump and <laughs> I'm having a pre-diabetic moment. Best ever food review show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Yeah, you're gonna want to blow on this. Oh, Liz. This one is their longest variation. The word variant is ruined for me now. I love it, it's a classic. It reminds me of the fourth grade. 
And the story ends there. So is that chicken breast? Is this tilapia? <laughs> what is it about? Cream mushrooms. What is it about? What is it? What is it about? Yo, dude, it's our fourth location, like not our 19th. Are you okay? Are you gonna make it? Would Gordy Ram? Would, would uh, Gordy? Would Gord Gordy? <laughs> well, I'm good friends with Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, I call him Gordy. Got it. I never would have been able to come up with this over your wow. Applebee's wow. University levels. Yes, I'm an Apple buddy, and after that, I'm a flunky. I went to the doctor. He said I'm so badass. He said I'm morbidly a beast. A beast. Yeah. Guys, that's it for this one. I want to say a huge thank you to my friend Calvin right here from the YouTube channel FKN Deliciousness is the name. You can subscribe and follow him on all of his fun food adventures. So that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A, A peace. peace. Oh, man, is there a hospital nearby? I need an elliptical or a doctor. God, uh, I'm starting to feel diabetic right now. And maybe an enema? <laughs>